There's only one car out there that Clarkson, Hammond and May can all agree on that they like. A car that not one of them can pick any holes in. And it's this, the Ford Mondeo ST200. And I bought one. Now you Grand Tour fans out there will realise that they used the estate version in that episode and this is the more popular hatchback, but it still has all those Mondeo hallmarks. It's got so much space inside, it's got a fantastic chassis which means it drives well and this being the ST model, it's got the V6 under the bonnet. 2.5 litres and in this car, 202 brake horsepower. The famous ST Mondeo is the ST220, the car that came after this with a 3 litre engine. There are plenty of them kicking around however, so the ST200 is more rare and in my opinion, prettier. Whenever I walk up to this car, I can't help but think about the epic ProDrive Mondeo Super Touring cars from 20 years ago. I feel like I've got my own piece of BTCC history. Let's look under the bonnet. So, under here, as I said, is the 2.5 litre Duratec V6. So 202 brake horsepower and 173 pounds-feet of torque. So those aren't crazy numbers. It wasn't the BMW M5 of its day. Think of it more as a Kia Stinger GTS. That saloon that's just got that bit more pep. This was a proper performance saloon back in the day. This engine has a properly cool story about it, but we'll save that for another time. So how much did this rather lovely V6 cost me? £900, under a grand for all of this. But with the good comes the bad. Good underneath the bonnet, but bad pretty much everywhere else. So let me take you through what is wrong with my Mondeo. At the front, the bumper has crumpled in. Down the sides, the lacquer is flaky and has water under it. One of the side skirts is flopping off and there's been a dodgy respray where some welding has been done on the rear right wheel arch. Mondeos in the UK are known for their rust, but I think I've found a good one. The only bad bit I can see is this section at the end of the sill, which obviously continues into the wheel arch. Now this is a common place for rust on a whole host of cars, and the fact that this job has been completed on the other side shows that it's a weak point in this car. But the floors on a Mondeo are supposed to be their weak point, but mine seem okay. So if this is it, I'm pretty happy with that. That shouldn't be too hard a job to do. Now the worst part of the car for me isn't even that floppy sill on the other side, it's the wheels. I think they look absolutely awful. Look at these centre caps, what are those? I cannot wait to get these off the car, it will look so much better with a proper set of rims. And now for probably the most charismatic dent on this car, this one right in the middle above the Ford badge. Now, it's kind of tough to think about how this actually happened. I think it's a cyclist that has gone into the back of this car while it's been standing still because it's at a weird height. So it seems like the sort of handlebars of a bicycle. This car then is what we'd call London spec. It's covered in scratches, covered in dents. London just wrecks cars. But for 900 quid, I'm pretty damn happy. I've got a great engine and fixing an engine is expensive and difficult. Fixing bodywork is relatively easy, but still, this regal blue definitely deserves it better. So hopefully we can get it back to its former glory at some point during this series. On the move, the ST200 is a lovely piece of kit. The engine loves to rev, The chassis feels great underneath you, and you can tell the suspension has been engineered properly. The steering can seem a bit slow, the brakes aren't great, and there are three different brands of tyre on the car, but those can be sorted in the near future. One thing I love about this car is how it sits. The wheels are properly tucked up into the arches, and that side profile looks amazing. Now, one thing James May will not be pleased with in this car is the radio. That is definitely not standard. Now, I don't actually know the person I bought this car from. It was kind of done through a third party, and that is a bit of a monstrosity. Every now and again, when you're driving in the dark, that thing goes into stroke mode, and you nearly have some sort of fit, so that needs to be removed. I don't know what the original Mondeo radio was like. I imagine it's something much cooler than that. 
these aren't probably the best seats I've ever experienced to be honest, apart from the really expensive stuff like say the Bentley Continental GT, these are awesome, if these were sold in the brand new Fords, the Fiesta ST Focus RS, people would be all over them seeing how great they are, but here they are in a 2000 Mondeo, and actually they're in quite good nick, so if the car ever completely fails me, I bet they'll fetch a decent dollar on the internet. Now, what did Jeremy, Richard and James have to say about the ST200 in that rather moving Grand Tour film? James said, Do you know what I liked? It's the fast version, but it was still comfortable. These seats were great. Hammond said, It had a massive boot and Ford had the sense to give it five doors, which is something Austin didn't think of with the Allegro. And then of course from Jeremy, I like the speed. Most YouTube cars are supercars, drift cars, all the high-end stuff, but our YouTube car is more realistic, more mundane, and I think it's equally as cool for it. Now, we do have future videos planned with this car, and some of them will be sponsored so that we can make the most from this series. Now, I want to get this car to a stage where I'm happy for one of the three guys to get behind the wheel and review it, but also we want to include you guys in this journey. We want you guys to have an opinion on what we do with this car. So, in the description, you will find a link to a poll on Drive Tribe, and you guys have three options. Either we fully restore this car to the condition it was when it came out of the showroom in the year 2000, a full restoration. The second option is that we lightly modify it to just lift the performance that bit. And the third option is that we go ham on the car, fully modify it and turn it into a V6 animal. So as I said, drop into the description below and cast your vote in the poll. We're looking forward to hearing what you think should be done with this car. So get voting, get commenting, and let's have a bit of fun with Drive Tribe's first project car.